Hi, this is Shah Darby. In this video, I will give you an introduction to the Java Persistence API. The Java Persistence API allows you to run queries and update data in the database. One thing to note is that there's no need to write SQL statements with JDBC. Instead, what you do is you map Java classes to database tables. This is known as object to relational mapping. So with JPA, you make use of object to relational mappings. You take your Java classes and you map them to the appropriate tables on the database. Then, instead of writing the low level SQL, all you do is you create your objects and you make use of JPA and you tell JPA to simply save your object. The ORM section here in the middle handles mapping your Java classes to the appropriate database tables. And it makes it really easy to perform database persistence with Java. All right, so let's look at the actual development process with JPA. The first step you'll do is you'll create the entity mapping. Then from there, you'll define a persistence XML. Next, you store your entity in the database. And then finally, you can query the entities from the database. So let's take a look at step one, creating the entity mapping. So as I mentioned, you'll take your Java class and you'll map it to an actual database table. And you'll accomplish this by making use of annotations. So JPA provides special annotations for you to provide this mapping. So at the top in this example, I have this class called employee. And right before that, I put the annotation for at entity. So this will map the employee class to a table called employee. Then I have a field called first name. That's a string. So I'll make use of the JPA annotations to specify the size of the string maximum of 10. And I specify that it's not null. Next, I have another field of last name. And here I set the size minimum of two, max of 20. So you can place additional constraints on your fields when you're mapping them to the appropriate database tables. And you can repeat this process for X number of fields that you have in your application. Okay, so in the previous step, we actually mapped our Java class to a database table. In this next step, we need to define a persistence XML. This file will basically tell the system how to connect to your database and also which classes to map for the system. So here I tell the system how to connect to the database using the JTA data source and I give the actual JNDI name of the database that we're making use of. Then I give a list of the mapped classes. So in this example, I only have one class, Lesson32.Employee, but if we had additional classes, we would simply repeat this line for each one of those mapped classes. And that's it. Now moving ahead to step three, I'll show you how to actually store your entity in the database. So starting at the top of the code, we have our entity manager factory. And then next we have our user transaction. Then we actually use the factory to create an entity manager. So the entity manager is the main item that we'll use for saving information and retrieving information from the database. Next, what I do in the next three lines is I simply create an employee. So I just create a new employee from scratch using the new keyword. And I simply set the values here. So this is all plain Java code of creating an object and setting the values. Next, I go ahead and begin a transaction by saying user transaction dot begin. Then this is where I'm at the real work of actually saving it to the database. So I'll make use of the entity manager. I say em dot persist and I give the object reference new employee. So this actually goes into the JPA ORM system and they will take that information and store it in the database based on the mappings that we've defined a little bit earlier. And then finally, I go through and say user transaction dot commit and that'll commit all the changes to the actual database. And that's it. That's the main process there for storing an entity in the database. All right. So in the previous step, we actually stored an employee in the database. Now what we'd like to do is query for employees. So in step four, we're actually going to select employees that have the last name of Thompson. And when we do a query, we make use of the JPA query language, which is similar to SQL, but it's more object based. So in the code here, I make use of my entity manager and then I say em.createQuery and I say select E from employee as E where E.LastName equals Thompson. So here I say E.LastName, that's the actual property that I'm referring to and then I get the actual result list. So it'll perform this query, give me a list of all employees that have the last name of Thompson and then return it to me as a list. And then I can go ahead and use that in other parts of my application. Well, that wraps up our video. In this video, I gave you an introduction to the Java Persistence API.